It was in September 2008. The right-wing bloc in Italy, led by their leader Silvio Berlusconi, wanted to ban the construction of mosques in the country using legal means. This was when the anti-Islamist movement gathered steam in Italy. And make no mistake, the campaign saw strong support among the Italians. As per a report published in 2008, the trust deficit between Italians and Muslims was very high and a third of the locals did not want a mosque in their neighborhood. And guess what? Silvio Berlusconi won the elections that year with all pomps and glory. However, the campaign against Islamists could not move forward due to fears of backlash from the liberal section. Fifteen years down the line, the right-wing government of Giorgia Meloni is taking baby steps towards realizing the country's decade-old campaign against Islamists. The government is said to have prepared a draft law that would ban Muslim prayers outside government-authorized mosques. That is not all. If you delve into details, you will find out the government has effectively banned Muslim prayers on Italian soil, irrespective of the fact that they are performed inside mosques or outside. As per the draft, cultural and religious organizations that have not signed an agreement with the Italian state will not be allowed to use a property as a place of worship. So far, so good. But here is the tricky part. The country's Muslim community has not signed any such agreement with the state. Muslims are obviously not pleased with this development. One Islamic preacher living in Italy said, it is a bill that clearly discriminates against Muslims and does not respect the Italian constitution that protects all citizens living in Italy. Well, we all know that the steps being taken by Italy against Islamists are meant to curb violence in the name of Islam. Many liberal world leaders, including Barack Obama, are vehemently against using the term Islamic terrorism because they think it will not change anything on the ground. Watch yourself. For a while now, the main contribution of some of my friends on the other side of the aisle have made in the fight against ISIL is to criticize this administration and me for not using the phrase radical Islam. That's the key, they tell us. We can't beat ISIL unless we call them radical Islamists. What exactly would using this label accomplish? What exactly would it change? Would it make ISIL less committed to trying to kill Americans? Would it bring in more allies? Is there a military strategy that is served by this? The answer is none of the above. Now, Italy is setting a historic precedent. It is blurring the line between Islam and Islamists. And this campaign is highly popular among the Italians. According to reports, a majority of them don't view Islam in a positive light. Despite Muslims being the second largest community in the country, Islam is not officially recognized by the state. That means mosques in Italy cannot receive public funds, Islamic weddings don't have legal value, and Muslim workers are not entitled to take days off for religious holidays. So can we say Italy is suffering from Islamophobia? And if yes, is it justified? Europe has been a soft target for Islamists for years now. Since 2014, more than 20 fatal attacks have been carried out in Europe. France saw eight attacks between 2015 and 16. The UK saw three major attacks. Countries including Belgium, Germany, Russia and Spain also saw major attacks carried out by Islamists. Well, we don't see Italy on this list. Now the question is, is it because of Islamophobia? Europe, including Italy, has always embraced migrants. But what did ISIS do? They exploited the flow of refugees and migrants to commit acts of terrorism. And guess what? Italy is now cracking down on migration as well. 
To me, this seems a very logical and justified reaction. As you sow, so shall you reap.